Do you like scary movies? Simple enough question for most, however, for the people of Woodsboro, California. The utterance of those five words cuts to the bone. I'm Special Agent Casper Bollocks of the Covert Federal Division of Unexplained Phenomena, and this is Behind the Movie Killer. It all began with a single phone call to Woodsboro High School senior, Casey Becker. She thought it was a joke, possibly being played by her boyfriend, Steve, who was on his way over. Unfortunately, she soon realized that this was no joke, and what transpired over the preceding ten minutes turned into a gore-soaked nightmare that, although it pains me to say, could have been right out of a horror movie. I was called in to investigate as soon as the killer reached out to his next target, Sidney Prescott, another Woodsboro High senior. Because of my line of work, I'm a bit of a horror film aficionado myself, so I was eager to get involved. The killer's method was indeed textbook slasher. First a harassing phone call, then an attack. Sadly, Casey Becker was not so lucky. However, Miss Prescott was a fighter. She survived her initial attack but there was much more to come. At first, I spoke with a baby-faced deputy sheriff who tried breaking down the case for me. Although his enthusiasm was clearly sincere, I opted to conduct my own investigation. The media was soon swarming the high school. I kept my distance, opting to watch the circus from afar. If we were indeed in the real-life horror movie, there was a good chance of something standing out. I took notice of a particularly overzealous reporter. She seemed to have a pass with Miss Prescott. I brought an ice pack up to this reporter and was able to learn that exactly one year ago, Sydney's mother Maureen was the victim of a vicious murder. A death from the fairly recent past coming back to haunt a small town? That is classic horror movie mentality. This was the lead I needed to follow. After some fast file digging, I learned that the man arrested for Maureen's murder was currently incarcerated at a nearby penitentiary. His name was Cotton Weary. Mr. Weary was apparently having an affair with Maureen. One evening, in a supposed drunken rage, he murdered her in her own home. Despite being convicted, Cotton still claimed his innocence. I had to speak with this man. So I made the hour and a half trip up to the penitentiary to see if Mr. Weary felt like talking. However, before I even set foot inside the facility, I caught sight of someone exiting to the parking lot. He was tall and gangly looking, sort of like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. I knew I saw him before. He was talking on a cell phone, and then I heard his goofy laugh. It was Stu Mocker, one of Sidney's friends. Why would he be there? I needed a lead, so I got in touch with Gail Weathers again. Turns out, Stu was currently dating Sidney's best friend, but he previously dated Casey Becker. Yes, we were indeed in a real-life horror movie, and I just discovered the final twist. There was no time to speak with Cotton Weary. Either he was involved with these killings or not, he was already in jail, which meant there was still a killer in Woodsboro who needed to be stopped. As I rushed back to town, I reached out to the Woodsboro Sheriff's Department and was once again put in contact with the Deputy Sheriff. I informed him of my suspicions regarding Sidney's friend. The Deputy told me that Stu was currently dating his sister, and he'd known him for a very long time. He said there was no way Stu could mastermind creating a real-life horror movie all by himself. He then informed me that Stu was most likely already drunk at the party he was currently throwing at his home. That's right, a party. Now clearly, my deputy friend had never seen Prom Night, My Bloody Valentine, or any of the Friday the 13th movies, because whenever there's a party or some type of social gathering thrown during the last act, it usually results in a bloodbath. For his sister's sake, I begged him to stop by the party. He agreed, but only after I promised to put in a good word for him with Gail Weathers. As I began my drive back to Woodsboro, I worried whether or not the deputy and the reporter would be able to keep the killer from striking again, at least before I got there. Upon arriving at Stu's home, I got my unfortunate answer. The party was indeed a front for more murderous mayhem. 
and I was correct about Stu being the killer. However, as the deputy had speculated, he did not act alone. It was Sidney's boyfriend, Billy Loomis, who was the brains behind the entire plot. Blaming the promiscuous tendencies of Sidney's mother, Maureen, for breaking up his mother and father, Billy sought to destroy Sidney by turning her life into a literal horror movie. However, both Billy and Stu failed to remember one of the most important aspects of any good horror movie. The final girl always wins. I finally got a chance to speak with Sidney Prescott right before she headed off for her freshman year at Windsor College. I asked her what she thought about the idea of Hollywood making a horror movie based on what happened to her in Woodsboro. She laughed and said it was a little weird having Tori Spelling playing her, but at least it would bring her some closure to the whole ordeal, in addition to the fact that Billy and Stu were dead. It was nice seeing the real-life final girl feeling once again at ease, but the horror movie fan inside me couldn't help but remark that she clearly had never seen Friday the 13th Part 5. Just because the killer's dead doesn't mean it's over. Tick shot.